This is Geometry Lesson 5-4, Proofs Using Transitivity. In class, we worked through the activity that caused you to create two interconnecting circles. And then it gave you a triangle, A, B, C. What I want you to do now is look at this proof that I have here. First of all, let's talk about the four components of a proof. And we've talked about this before, these proofs, or we've talked about the components of a proof before, but now I want to, I formalized it and put it into some steps for you. Whenever we have a proof, we know we will always be given information. We always have a goal, what we want to prove. There may or may not be a drawing. You might want to add a drawing if it's not a given. And then you actually have the proof portion that's made up of conclusions and justifications by which Q is shown to follow from P. So I have a proof here as an example, and it's several or it's more than the one to two steps that we have been working with before. Just and we're using the drawing that you came up with in the activity that we did in class. So you're given a circle A that has radius A B. And then you're given circle B with radius E A. And then we also know that circle A is going to intersect with circle B at points C and D. So that's our given information. And with that information I can draw some conclusions. And when I see in a proof circles, I often go to the definition of a circle and I say, I know if I have a circle that from the center to the outside of my circle is always the same distance all the way around my circle. So I can use that definition of a circle in this proof, I know that if I look at circle A, from A to C is going to be the same length as it is from A to B. And then if I look at circle B, A or B to A, or we'll just call it AB, is this going to be the same as B to C? So I got all of that information from the definition of a circle. Now when I see this, I see an overlap here. I know that AB is equal to two different things. I know that it's equal to AC and I know that it's equal to BC, which means that those things need to be equal to each other, and that's the transitive property of equality. Which now, because I have all my sides being congruent to each other, I'm sorry, equal to each other, I can now get to my proof statement. ABC is equilateral because of the definition of an equilateral triangle. So this is our first formal proof, and it's an example that you can use when working with some of the other proofs that we have in this lesson. What I'd like you to do now is stop the video or pause the video and read through the different angles that are formed by a transversal. We have studied corresponding angles thus far, but I'd like you to take a look at three, these three different kinds and then start the video when you have read. Okay, we have some more angles to identify when you have two lines being intersected with a transversal. We also are going to add what we call or, um, alternate interior angles. So that would be angle 4 and angle 6, angle 3 and angle 5. They are on alternate sides of the transversal, and I, they are on the interior of my non-intersecting lines. Now let's go to the alternate exterior angles. They're on the exterior of my non-transversal lines, or non-intersecting lines. So 1 is going to match up with 8, and 2 is going to match up with 7. They are on alternating sides of the transversal, but on the exterior of the non-intersecting lines. And then the last set of angles we want to talk about are the, called the same side interior angles. 4 and angle 5 would be same side, and 3 and angle 6 would be same side interior angles. So now you have four sets of angles, four types of angles that you need to be able to identify when you see two lines being intersected by a transversal. The other one is the corresponding angles postulate that we studied back in chapter 3. 
So these four are going to be very important to you as we progress through um, our proof portion of this course. Now let's move on to the next set of information here. As with corresponding angles, you can pr um, we proved that they were equal if the lines were parallel or if the lines were parallel, they were equal. We're going to do the same thing with these other types of angles that we identified above. We have a parallel lines theorem that says if two lines are parallel or if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles are congruent and the same side interior angles are supplementary. And then we can also go the converse of that and if we have the alternate interior or alternate exterior angles congruent to each other, then we can say my lines are parallel. And if our same side interior angles are supplementary, then our lines are parallel. And there's a really nice chart right here that I included in your notes that would help you look at all four of those different um, theorems and postulates. And we can use these when you want to, if you're given parallel lines and you want to then say your angles are equal or um, are supplementary, or if you have those angles and you want to prove parallel lines. So this chart right here will help you identify which options you may or may not have. Now I'd like to have you go down to the bottom of the page and look at the examples that I have. Let's look at this example here. I'm given that my lines are parallel. So if my lines are parallel, then I know that all those different types of angles that we discussed above are going to be congruent to each other or equal, I'm sorry. So if I know that angle 3 is equal to 124 degrees, I know that angle 2 is an alternate interior angle, and I know that those are equal if my lines are parallel. So if angle 2 is 124 also, I have what's called a, lin I have a linear pair with angle 1 and angle 2, so I can say 180 minus 124 would equal the measure of angle 1. So if I do the arithmetic here, then I know the measure of angle 1 is 56 degrees. This proof here is going to prove that alternate interior angles, if they are equal, your lines then would be parallel, M and N here would be parallel. So I'm going to use this proof to, to prove the theorem so that I can use it in future proofs. So here I have done some markings on my picture here. I know that 4 is congruent to 6 because that was given to me. And then looking at this, I know that 6 is congruent to 8 because of the vertical angles theorem. Then I know that angle 4 is congruent to angle 8 because of the transitive property. And then if you look at 4 and 8 here, those are corresponding angles, and if those angles are equal, then we know our lines are parallel. So our corresponding angles postulate justifies our final statement that M is parallel to N. So this proof here proves that alternate interior angle, when the alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. When you get to class, then we will spend some more time working on proofs using the transitive property. And then in lesson five, we're going to work on some proofs using reflection. So the next two lessons are going to be very heavily focused on proofs. So this concludes lesson five, four.